How are you doing everybody? Welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today we're going to be doing a practice session on better ball striking. So basically I'm going to kind of, I think this could be quite a, a, a new feature on the channel actually. I was, I was thinking the other day about ways of winter practice and putting drills and exercises and then I started to think well why don't we start with a, a better ball striking kind of program where I could hit a few shots documenting some of the things that are necessity to better ball striking and then you know you can either I don't know really watch it make some notes and then try and replicate it when you next go down to the driving range or, or maybe you could have it playing in your pocket with the headphones on and kind of copying what's going on um but you know let, let's kind of talk about it and see how it goes and then we can uh, always something we can come in the future so the idea is is what we're going to be talking about is the ball striking part of the golf swing so that means that we're going to be talking about elements of rotation in the golf swing it means that we'll be talking about um, how the hands are working how things like the elbow works because those are kind of priorities when it comes to uh, striking the golf ball. So kind of start ourselves off. Now what I would do is the first part of the session which I'm not necessarily going to spend too much time doing because I think it'd be slightly boring but it's kind of warming up and the way that you'd want to warm up is having a few practice swings loosening up a little bit maybe using like a bit of a weighted club which we've, we have talked about in the past. So something uh, like a um, <clears throat> orange whip trainer could be quite a useful aid to warm up or maybe like a swing speed stick just something just to kind of get yourself loosened up and just to have a few little swings just to get the blood pumping and loosen up the muscles before you start hitting a few shots so you'd spend a few minutes doing that first and foremost then what i'd strongly suggest is what you're going to do is you're going to start focusing on the pitching action first so I'm going to go for my 56 degree now as I'm sure you can probably gather um, by the wind gust blowing in towards the microphone it's it's not necessarily the best day today winds howling into and off the left but I think it's the process which is more important than necessarily the ball flight of today's video so we shall persevere um, where do we go wrong in pitching or what am I generally looking for well first and foremost I'm going to do things like um, position the ball roughly centrally in my stance and just keep myself nice and centered over the golf ball so that would be the first thing you know that i'm getting myself getting the feeling that my shoulders are nice and horizontal and getting this feeling of being over the golf ball whilst i hit a few little half a shots once i've done that then what i'd be doing is i'd be moving around targets a little bit so starting to aim a little um, and then i'm basically just trying to find my plane so i can hit some straighter shots so for example you know that one starting to aim at a target which is about 60 yards in front of me here and what i'd be doing here is i'd now be having an element of thought and this is what i'd suggest for you guys where i'm using my right hand if you like the right elbow to feel as though it's guiding the club towards the direction where i'm aiming so one of the problems that we tend to see with a lot of amateurs is that the we start to get too flippy and one of the reasons why you get too flippy is because there's either a problem with your pivoting action which we'll come to later in the video or the right arm isn't supporting and really pushing the ball towards the target so just to help from this camera i'm going to aim back square towards the mat and just really work on pushing the club and what we can see from the face on perspective as well is how we don't look excessively flippy in terms of you know this way there's going to be an element of the right arm almost feeling like it's really pushing the club through. Now, even though this is a short club, very lofty club, it's still going to give you a sense of how to hit the golf ball. And I'm not necessarily t teaching this as a pitch. This isn't really like a pitching type of shot. I'm still introducing an element of wrist cock with this. But like I said earlier, my main focus is just to make sure that my right arm is supporting that hit. Now, if you're struggling to get the feeling for that, then drills that we've done in the in the past on the channel and what I would start to incorporate now would be to use the uh, like a training um, alignment stick. And what you're going to be doing with this is you place it underneath the club so it sits on the left hip. It promotes an element of shaffling to start off with, but then the idea is that you don't want it to hit you in the rib cage as you're coming towards that hit. And basically this will give you the same sort of feeling that I was talking about with the idea of supporting the shaft with that right hand. And what that does for me is that's just a nice feeling to keep in the club face stable. But more importantly, if your elbow drives in front of you, 
then what it does is it's pushing the hands over the golf ball, which means that you're going to help you control that low point. So I would spend a little bit of time doing that first with some short actions. Then what I'd do is kind of progress it up a little bit with a, with a more, a slightly less lofted. So I've got a nine iron now. And what I'm going to do here is just aim myself slightly left down towards that 100 yard marker and just the same sort of shot, but just getting accustomed to the idea of going to be hitting this in today's conditions, probably about 110, but normally maybe a kind of 135 with a range ball swing here, 140 yards. And again, just getting accustomed to now moving around the mat, as you can see, with my alignment, short swing, driving the elbow as best as I can. And just kind of, you know, having an element of feedback as to what's going on. So if I'm starting to miss a few shots towards the left hand side, then I'd probably start to think a bit about the club path and making sure this elbow is really working, starting to not get that contact, then the same sort of feeling of just making sure that elbow is driving forward to help me really control the low point coming in towards that hit. Now, again, with a shorter swing, it's easier. It's easier because I'm not having to think much about rotation and I'm mainly just at the moment thinking very much about this driving the elbow that's been my main conscious thought up to now so I hit a couple more like that I've been generally pretty pleased with the uh, with the contact so far on these like I say the only problem when you're practicing these sort of conditions is any sort of tilt or curvature you put on the ball is going to be emphasized by the wind direction massively but I don't necessarily want to start aiming too far off course and training in the wrong sort of habit with these sort of swings. So I'm just trying to stay pretty disciplined, getting this feeling of the right elbow at the moment. And at the moment, I know I'm doing a pretty good job because the contacts have all been pretty tidy with an element of consistency. So generally speaking, first part of it, introducing an element of consciousness in towards that right elbow, because that would be my kind of feeling of the hit and just trying to get that timing in there as well. So that's done, and I'd have done a little bit of that. Then I'd be starting to think a little bit about how much control I have over the club face. So that might have been a telltale sign already um, with some of the shots that I've hit. So I'm gonna progress up now to a seven iron. And what I'm gonna do now is, like we've talked about recently on the release um, of the golf club, talked a lot about that you know if you 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 would naturally find playing which we've we've talked about so i don't want to digress too much in these videos because i want this to be much more kind of hands-on what you would do but what you'll generally find is is naturally people will try and find playing so if you if you stop rotating you'll end up looking a little bit this way where you'll either have excessive amount of rotation of the lead arm or you'll look a little bit flippy to to basically keep the club moving through so what we don't want to do is is have too much of this going on so what really helps your contact as well is your pivoting action and, and in particular that the lead hip working back and behind you coming in towards the hit. So if you start to kind of get a little bit lateral or a little bit kind of upward facing with the pelvis then you're likely to get a little bit trapped and then all of a sudden you can be a bit vulnerable in terms of you know the contact can get a little bit shallow um, or the sound it just doesn't offer you that same sort of sound of compression on the back of the ball. So I've gone a little less lofted 7-iron now going to start aiming a little bit square with the mat um, and I'm going to be thinking now about the elbow as well to a degree but I'm going to introduce more consciousness now in towards that lead hip so I'm just going to feel like I'm short swing still and pulling that lead hip back and the idea is that as I'm pulling that lead hip back it should help me out with that release which means I don't need any kind of excess amount of rotation and I'm hoping I'm kind of demonstrating more of a a sort of drive hold release where the club face is much square as you can see on that one so there's no real roll over it's much squarer coming in towards that hit and that would be a feeling that I'd like to have when playing or at least have a shot in there where I've got a shorter swing clearing that left hip back and out of the way and even if the curvature gets a little bit too much from left to right but at least I'm still clearing that lead hip out of the way controlling the contact and by controlling the face due to that pivoting action basically means even if the starting direction is a little bit left it's not going to miss towards the left hand side because there's no flipping nature of the hands now i think that's a useful shot i mean the reason and we'll talk about this in a moment the um the reason why i'd only play this sort of 
shot from left arm horizontally is what will happen is when you introduce just a pure consciousness in towards this lead hip going back, you'll get great contacts. We're only doing short swings and staying over the ball. But what can happen is we can sometimes get a little bit spinny on it, which we'll talk about in this last little feature. And the problem is, is if you get a little bit spinny, what can happen is that it can saturate all the space for the right elbow to come into. And then that means that the club would come down a little bit vertical. So what I tend to, to do is if I'm going to be trying to hit a low ball flight and I'm thinking about clearing that lead hip out the way is I'd almost be playing with an element of left to right in mind. But again, you've got to remember that this video is very much about ball striking and getting a better contact on the back of the ball. So it's not always about, um, you know, trying to marry everything up. So lost that one a little bit. I can see that wasn't such a good pivoting action. Probably just need to concentrate for a few and just make sure that I'm actually kind of practicing what I'm preaching. So get myself lined up. So that's a better one. A little bit more disciplined in that. And then it's just, and even as I do this, I'm still going to exaggerate feelings. That's again, a better one. So the feeling almost is that my lead hips going back as my left hand goes back towards the target. So it's much more kind of like I'm hitting it with the back of my left hand is my kind of feeling with these. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy with those. I think what I'd have seen is because I've started off with my elbow. So that's kind of supporting the hit. And then what I've started to do is think about my lead hip. But like I said, what will happen is that they just be slightly vulnerable now as we go into a full swing that if I kind of did that move, so if I swung up to the top and went straight back for left hip back and handle forward, it's just that this might spin out a little bit, which means that there's going to be no space for my elbow. So what we now need to do is we need to try and find that sort of timing. So again, what you might do is have a couple of swings where you swing up to the top, then pause. Think about keeping the right hip where it is, pull the left hip back onto the touch line, and then try and get that feeling of pulling that left hip back which is a really difficult drill and exercise to do, but at least it brings in an element of consciousness in towards that transitional area. So it's really difficult to do to get that contact and piece it all together. But then you can start to hit some shots where you'll almost feel it swinging up and then that kind of sitting action. So you're keeping space for your right elbow. And that's basically what I'd be doing, I think, as a priority, we're talking mainly irons and trying to avoid anything driver at the moment because we're not talking about, well, we're talking about ball striking and the, and the qualities of a good ball strike is going to be the, the elbow drive and the clearance on this side. But what we've got to do is make sure that we don't get too spinny and the elbow gets trapped. So the sequence is, is as we go for a big backswing, we've then got to try and feel like the weight's staying momentarily here as I then kind of push my pelvis back down in towards the ground, which means it stops this from spinning out, which means that there's space for the elbow to drive into. And then I can go back to swinging that handle left a little bit more. So what would be difficult today is to do too much in terms of the respect of ball flight. So all I'm trying to do at the moment is just listen out for that initial sort of contact is decent on the back of the golf ball. Not too concerned about anything else, but we are going to carry this theme on. So hopefully, um, Hopefully it's something that we, we see as quite a beneficial thing. I'd suggest that what you've seen out of today is, is just there'd be an element of variety in terms of what I'm trying to feel when I'm hitting golf balls. So I don't spend the whole time doing the same sort of thing. The problem is, is what will happen and the reason why I think these videos are quite beneficial is when you go down to the driving range, you might accumulate only like, I don't know, uh, say 10 minutes worth of conscious competence, right? So it's not really enough time to justify trying to make a swing change. So what I'd be trying to do is just trying to give yourself some different feels and try and learn some new things when you're down here, which is kind of what I've done. So I kind of started on the short swings 
where I was solely focused on the right hand and its responsibility for helping me find the low point with my hand path. And then what I started to do is think about my pivot action, which helps the release and stops the club from turning over to fine plane. And then what I started to do is kind of marry that together where I was swinging up towards the top and then just trying to transition without spinning out. And then if you can kind of put the blend of those together and get a bit of a feeling, then this is kind of what I'd suggest you should practice. Now, it might not demonstrate the same sort of level of like what I've done today in terms of hitting, but that's my whole point. That's why you should be practicing at home and be doing your 10, 20 minutes of repetition per day, you know, really concentrating on these sort of movements because when you go down to the range, you'll get a much stronger feeling for what's right and wrong. So those are the sort of qualities that you need to have to control that low point. And I think this is a, a type of video that we will kind of come back to and talk about from over the top or pitching or whatever it might be. So if you've got any suggestions, drop it in the comments box below. Um, and yeah, you'd be doing this with the least lofted iron that you want to, which, what did I bring up with me from there? So I've just got some clubs that I leave on site here. So these aren't actually mine. This is a now a five iron, which I'll kind of conclude with. And, you know, normally if I was going to be doing this, you'd be doing it all the way up to the, the kind of utility iron that I play with. But, you know, all of this about contact, those are the key, those are the key movements that you need to be able to control that low point on the golf swing, your pivoting action, and having the ability to drive the elbow are absolutely fundamental things that you need. Without those, you might catch a few of them, but you're gonna struggle for that sort of consistency. So that's the first one, which was a little bit duffy. And a little bit clean again. So just kind of concentrating a couple to finish off. Much better here. Yeah, much better contact, a little bit left, but better contact. Hopefully enjoy the video. We've got um, some kind of top tracer, pro tracers being installed at the beginning of February at Four Ashes. We'll have one in here. So that'd be much more, much give you a much stronger visualization of the ball flight. Try to do it at night time so that you can see it. Hopefully that's benefited. Drop it in the comments box below if there's other features that you want to see on the channel. I'll catch up with you guys again soon.